So what we're going to be looking at today is straight line depreciation. And because you've all watched the previous video on depreciation, you should have a very good understanding of what straight line depreciation is going to be. So the first thing we need to know is that a new vehicle loses around 30% of its value in the so you should all have a good understanding now of what depreciation means in cars from watching the previous video. So today we're going to be talking about straight line depreciation. So as you should all know, you buy your car brand new, here's my brand new car, and every year my car is worth less and less and less and less. And in straight line depreciation, as you can understand if we imagine a straight line graph, my car is going to depreciate in a straight line car back up here. So why does it do this? Well it depreciates in value simply because of its age, wear and tear. Simply by driving it out of the car dealership it loses value and often it just becomes outdated as a new model comes in with different bells and whistles that everyone really must have. So let's have a look at our first example. So my first question is, a Skoda was purchased for $25,000, here's my Skoda so that you can see it, and decreased in value by $28,000 in its first year. Obviously I'm missing a dollar sign here, you can fill that in. To the nearest dollar, what was its value after one year? Well, I know all of you are desperate to do it this way. You would like to find 28% of the $25,000. And if we did that on our calculators, I think we get something like $7,000. And then what you all like to do is you take $25,000, take away $7,000, and you'd get $18,000. And look, there is nothing wrong with doing it that way. We could do it the more sophisticated way. We've got 100% and we're taking away 28% which we could all probably do this in our head, 72%. So therefore, all we're doing is finding 72% of $25,000 and we get to $18,000 with less chances of mistakes. So either method is fine, that's okay. Let's look at the next question then. So my next question is a new Porsche. Here is my Porsche here was purchased for 115600 and was valued at, and we can all see my mistake here, it wasn't, it was valued at 102580 12 months later. What is the percentage decrease, there's my question, what is the percentage decrease in price to the nearest whole number in the first year? Well we're needing a percentage decrease, so the first thing we have to do is work out what the decrease is. So let's work that out. So remember to tell me what you're doing. So the decrease in value must be what we paid for it, which is 115,600, minus what it's now worth, which is 102,580. So if we do this very simple calculation, you get an answer of 13,020. So now that's what it's worth now. But the question is, is asking for is for a percentage decrease, a percentage decrease. So to get a percentage decrease we need our answer to be a percentage somehow. So we put our decrease over what we started with which is the cost price which is 115,600 and you can see these questions are all becoming quite similar, that's a zero. And we're going to times it by a hundred percent. So if I just write over here what we've done, we've done our decrease over the cost price and we've times it by a hundred percent. And if we work this out on our calculator, I think we get something like 11.2629 etc percent. So we need it to the nearest whole number, so that must be approximately 11%. Nice and simple. So that's just some straightforward depreciation. Now we're going to look at a straight line method of calculating depreciation. So that is when the value of a car 
decreases by the same amount each year. So if something's decreasing by the same amount, a constant amount, then you can imagine that we're going to be getting some kind of straight line graph, which is in the form y equals mx plus b, where our gradient m would have a negative value because it would have a negative slope. The depreciation value of an item is called the salvage value s. And this formula is a formula that you will need to know. And luckily, it is on your formula sheet. So it's something to know how to use and to know that's on your formula sheet. S is the salvage value of the asset after M periods. S salvage value really meaning what is the current value or the resave value or what is the depreciated value. V0 is the initial value of the asset. D is the amount of depreciation per period. So that's going to be obviously be a certain amount each year. And N is the number of time periods. So you can see this is really like our straight line graph. Our straight line graph, so you can see this is just like our graph of y equals mx plus b. And imagine if I rearrange this so that was y equal b and my gradient was negative minus mx. Now it's looking exactly the same as this formula over here, which is just so that I want you to really understand that we have a straight line graph that is just going in a negative direction. So let's now look at how we use our straight line formula for depreciation. Here's an example. A car is purchased for 28000 and depreciates by $2,000 each year. Calculate the salvage value of the car after three years. So let's have a look at all the information that we know. So what do we know? We know that V0, which is how much it starts off being, is 28,000. That's our purchase price of the car. Okay, and part, what else do we know? We know that it depreciates by $2,000 each year. So D is our depreciation, and that is $2,000. And what else do we know? We know our time periods. Our time periods are three. So we're after the salvage value. So we can write the formula out. It's a good idea to get into the practice of writing it out so you know what it looks like and you know what all the numbers are. V0 minus DN. So our V0 is 28,000. Depreciates by 2,000 each year. And my number of time periods is 3. So we place all of that into our calculator and we get um, $22,000. $22,000. So that's how much my car is now worth after 3 years. Part A. Let's have a look therefore at part B. So part B, after how many years will the car be valued at zero? And I've got here, note, in real life, items are often written off before they depreciate to zero. But this is just for the sake of doing some maths. So let's write down what we do know. We know our V0, it hasn't changed, $28,000. We know our depreciation, well that doesn't change because it's straight line, so every year my car is supposedly worth $2,000 left. My number of time periods, well, we don't know that. That's what we're trying to find. And our salvage value, what's it worth at the end? It has to be worth zero. So let's see if we can place this into a formula and come up with our answer. So let's write our formula out again. S equals V0 minus D N. And we can put in our numbers, so we have 28,000 minus 2,000 times n, I'll just put the n there, and our salvage value is zero. So what can we do? Well, how about we take this 28,000 to the other side, it's going to be a subtraction. So zero minus 28,000 gives us minus 28,000. and equals minus 2000N. 
And of course we want m by itself, so we need to take the minus 2000, there's a time sign so we must do a division by taking it to the other side, and as usual I've run out of room. So we get n is 28,000 divided by 2000, and if we do that onto our calculators or in our calculators, I think we get that n is approximately, or it is, 14 years. So that's how long it will take for that car to be effectively written off. So question four is a truck costs $300,000. The value of the truck is depreciated by $35,000 per year. When the value of the truck falls below $50,000, the truck can be what we call written off for truck's purposes. Calculate the number of years after which the truck should be replaced. All right, well, let's see what we need to know or what we do know. So we know that our V0 has to be 300,000 because this is our purchase cost of our truck. We also know that the depreciation, we are told, is $35,000 per year. So each year, this truck is worth $35,000 less. And the number of time periods is what we're trying to find. We don't know that. And we're told that the salvage value, that's when the truck can be written off, is $50,000. That's all the information that that question has given us. So it's a good idea to write that out so you know what's going on. Next, we can write down our formula, because it's something new, so it's a good idea to keep writing it down until you actually know it. So we can just plug in our numbers. So our salvage value we know is 50,000. The initial value of my truck was 300,000. My depreciation is 35,000. And N is my time periods, which I'm trying to find out. So we have just a small, simple equation which we should all easily be able to solve. I'm going to take my 30,000, 300,000, and I'm going to take it away from my 50,000. Now if I do this, I get negative 250,000 equals minus 35,000 N. So once we've done that, we want n by itself, so we're going to divide both sides by minus 35,000. And once we've done this, we can just slip that into our calculator, and I think we get something like 7.1428 years. Now that doesn't really make any sense. Calculate the number of years after which the truck should be replaced. Well, really, it should be replaced in the eighth year. So we're going to say it's approximately eight years. Nice and simple. So this last question says, draw a straight line graph to show the depreciation of the car in example three. Well, you can all go back and have a look at example three. That's a car that is purchased for 28,000 and depreciates by 2,000 each year. So in order to draw a straight line graph, it's probably a good idea to have some numbers. So we should probably have a table with age in years, and along the bottom of my table, it's probably a good idea to have a value. You have to excuse my writing, I'm struggling. So we can have zero one years, one year, two years, three years, and so on, up to 14 years, because we know in the 14th year from that example that the car was worth zero. We also know that at the start of it, the car was worth $28,000. And we know at the end of the second year, because it loses $2,000 in value each year, it must be worth $26,000. And then you can see in the second year, it must have been worth $24,000. And in the third year, $22,000 and so on. You don't need to draw up a table of values for everything. 
So we need to be able to graph this. So age in years will go along the bottom because it's like our x-axis and value in dollars will go along the other axis. And let's have work it out. So we'll go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And shall we go up in thousand dollar lots? 4,000, 8,000, 12,000. You'll get the gist. You've got a lot more room than me. Uh, 12, 16, 20, 24,000, and 28,000. And then we can just plot our points. And we can see it comes down nicely. We plot our few points, and there's my final ending point. So obviously after four years, it's come down a little bit more. And you, with your nice rulers and straight lines, you can simply draw that graph. Now yours won't have any missing pieces like mine, but this is computer and technology that doesn't always work. The other thing I just wanted to point out to you whilst I've got your attention is that the gradient of this graph. If we're trying to find our gradient, we'd have rise over run. And you can see the rise, we have 28,000, if we were to form our great big right angle triangle. And our run would be 14 years. And we can all see that this has a negative gradient, and you'd get negative 2,000. So you can see that our gradient is the depreciation, the amount that it depreciates in each year. So I just wanted to make you understand that the gradient in this case is the depreciation each year. Okay, so now you can have a look at the work that I have set. Any questions? You know where to find me.